and gentlemen, to another edition of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. Coming up on today's show, we will look back at the weekend that was with a big win for Christopher Busher at Richmond. We'll look ahead to this weekend's race at Michigan, and we'll also go over some headlines in the sport. Silly season in full swing and we'll answer your questions coming up with our Ask David segment at the end of today's show. We we told you a couple weeks ago we would all be taking our summer breaks of some sorts. Dominic off this week. David was off last week. I was off the week prior. So we make do with what we have. But nonetheless, the show goes on as David Starr joins us right now. David, always a pleasure, my friend. Hope you had a, a nice week off last week. Uh, what's going on in your world, man? Man, man, Tyler, good to see you guys. Uh, uh, Dominic's on vacation. Man, just uh, what a great weekend of racing. And uh, for me, uh, Saturday night, we had a big our Team Texas High Performance Driving School. We had about 80 drivers come out. We ran underneath the lights there at the Texas Motor Speedway for the first time. And it was pretty awesome. And then, to, and then to watch the Richmond race Sunday uh, Sunday afternoon was, was just awesome. Man, what a great weekend it was. And, uh, but man, that's, that's what I'm up to. That's great. How about yourself? What do you, well, man, you, you've had a busy weekend. You've been all over the place, dude. Yeah. Since we last talked, David, uh, I was out in Phoenix, uh, enjoyed myself out there. It was, it was pretty hot. I got up to 119, but I can't imagine how hot it was at Texas Motor Speedway. But I, I got to ask, David, uh, before we get to the news of the day and everything, you guys had your first ever nighttime racing school uh there at team texas on saturday nights fans got to drive under the lights there at texas motor speedway i mean what larry mack say all those years the the nighttime is the right time right how cool is that <laughs> for, for you well, like the way these drivers really, to experience that i love the way uh larry mack uh how he uh, views it you I mean, and I totally agree with him. I always say racing underneath the lights is magical. You know what I mean? I love racing underneath the lights. It's just something about racing at night on a Saturday night under the lights is like, man, it's like your local short track Saturday night feature, man. It's pretty awesome. But, man, we had a great time. All the customers that came, uh, everybody loved it. They were hollering and screaming. Man, there was a lot of happy people. And, uh it went it went great, man. We just had a great evening of, of people racing the cars, and uh, man, it was just I had a great time. I was an instructor, and just seeing all the people so happy when they get out of the cars, they're high fiving and hooting and hollering. It was awesome, man. Just a, a great night of racing Saturday night there at Texas Motor Speedway. And if you missed out on last Saturday, don't worry because David, not only do you have more racing schools coming out throughout the rest of this year, but you got more night schools coming up too. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's hot everywhere. Like you said, it was 119 degrees in Phoenix and uh, here in Texas, it was probably, you know, it's been 104, 105, 106. And then you put the heat index on it and it's hot, you know, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I like the hot weather, but most people don't, you know what I mean? And, and let me tell you, uh, standing out on pit road or standing out at, the, at the, any racetrack, when it's 105, 106 degrees outside during the day, it's just uncomfortable for anybody. I don't care who you are. So we're doing these night uh, driving schools at night, which is cool to do it under the lights. But the biggest reason is because when the sun goes down here in, in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, or anywhere in the United States, man, it's just uh, you got a nice breeze. It's like 25 degrees cooler. It's 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 doable, you know. Even though when the sun went down, I think it was still, you know, 98 degrees, 97 degrees, but it feels like it's 25 degrees cooler. You know, it's pleasant, it's doable, and that's the biggest reason why we're doing it because it is unbearable to have a racing school during the day. You know, we did this a year ago. I did it during the day, and to be honest with you, man, I had a couple of customers that fell out with heat stroke and had one or two instructors that really was it was a challenge for them, you know. But when you're inside those race cars running all day long, it's just, man, it's hot, 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 you know. So uh, so that's why we're doing it at night right now. I love it. Uh, you know, when I did the school a couple of weeks ago, I did it during the day. It wasn't nearly as hot as it is now. But, David, for me, like, I had so much adrenaline and everything, I wasn't thinking about the heat. The heat wasn't getting to me because I was – just so excited to get in the race car and wearing the fire suit and everything. Uh, 
you know, hopefully people get that same experience as far as I'm concerned that, you know, they, they ride the adrenaline wave when they're in the race car, but speaking of uh, the race car that uh, transitions us to look back at this uh, past weekend's race where Chris Busher gets his first win of 2023, his second career win for RFK racing. And, I got to tell you, what a showing it was for RFK Racing. Brad Keselowski led a lot of laps. He won stage two. Chris Buescher ultimately gets the job done, leading 80-plus laps, including the most important one there at the end. Uh, before we dive into RFK Racing and all that, let's start with Chris Buescher here. David, Chris Buescher's been running well all year long, and for him to get this done – I think he's the most underrated driver in the sport. He is very good on short tracks. He's proven that time and time again. He can hang there with the rest of them. You give him the equipment, he can get the job done. He's shown that with uh, the two wins he's picked up here for RFK the last two seasons. Man, Tyler, I totally agree with you, man. He uh, Chris is an amazing race car driver, and 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 that is why Ralph Fenway, Brad Kis- Kislowski, they grabbed him. Because you give Chris Boucher the right equipment, the great crew chief, the right team, and he's going to do what he's doing. You know, he uh, he's phenomenal the last couple of years, you know. And, uh, you know, it's no big secret why Brad grabbed him, you know. It's like, man, they know he's got lots and lots of talent. And, man, he he nobody gave him that win Sunday afternoon. He earned it. And, uh, man, before the caution came out right there at the end, uh, man, he had a five-second lead, six-second lead on everybody. He just – he's an incredible race car driver, always has been. And I think that Ralph Fenway Group and Brad Keselowski seen that a long time ago. That's why they grabbed him. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Chris Boucher and Brad Keselowski, man, they just uh, – you know, and, and – uh, RFK, they're just getting better and better and better. And, and man, I think they're, you know, they're hitting their stride at the right point in time. I mean, they're coming on strong the last two, three months, really all year. They've been getting better and better, but it's incredible. You look at Brad Keselowski, like you said, Tyler, all the laps he led. And then to see uh, Chris come come up there at the end and lead all those laps and have that big lead, man, I, I just think – you got you. You know, there's a lot of momentum there for the cha- championship run. We'll see how it it all plays out, but not surprised by Brad's performance and Chris's performance and that whole organization. Man, there's a lot of momentum there, and it's getting stronger and stronger. And we've seen we've seen them over the last couple of seasons get better and better and better. It's it's amazing. But like you said, Tyler, you give Chris Kesla, you give Chris, you give Chris Boucher. Uh, you give him a good race car, and, man, you can see what he's going to do with it. And for him, I I think he made a statement with that final restart to straight up outrun Denny Hamlin and all those guys. Everyone had fresh tires and everything, and he beat them. I mean, straight up. To me, that, that spoke a lot about his driving talent, his driving ability, that he could get the job done. What he reminds me of, David, I think you'll like this comparison. A good short track racer that can get the most out of the equipment when you give him the opportunity like that, and we've seen him be competitive on the restrictor plates and everything. He reminds me of like a a Clint Boyer of some sorts. That's who I see when I look at at Chris Butcher. And if you're RFK racing, if you're getting uh, a Clint Boyer 2.0, I think you're more than happy to have that type of driver right now. No, absolutely. You know, and he's he's I, I would agree with your statement earlier. He's probably the 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 biggest underrated driver out there. I mean, and, re, and I think part of it is, you know, Chris is such a nice guy. God, he we're great friends and he's soft spoken, just a great guy. But man, people forget, don't don't take that such a really, really nice guy, great guy. As but man, he's a fierce competitor on the racetrack. I mean, he is strong. Can get the job done, but man, I, 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 uh, man, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm excited for him. And uh, you know, you talk about short tracks, intermediate, super speedways, road courses. Chris is an all around great race car driver, you know, and he's showing that. And uh, I'm excited for for Brad and for Chris. And uh, it's cool to see, uh, 
you know, to see uh, uh, RFK racing in the playoffs. That's pretty cool, you know, because I don't think they were last year. Is that correct? Yeah, neither team made the playoffs last year. When Chris yeah. Buescher got his win, it was after the playoff had already right. started there at Bristol. But nonetheless, uh, RFK Racing, uh, let's talk about that. We heard during the race, uh, I think Jeff Burton was in Steve Latart. They were alluding to a lot what they've seen within that RFK organization that Brad Keselowski has really put his hand on that organization now. His fingerprints are all over that. The way they operate now is totally different than what they were a couple of years ago, and that Jack Roush has kind of backed off a bit, that he's letting Brad call the shots and run the operations, and you're seeing a very efficient team. And I know Ford, David, has not been as a whole that great this year. They've been the worst of the three manufacturers. But you could argue RFK Racing is kind of carrying the way, the way to Ford. I mean, they're they're better than Stuart Haas by a mile right now. You know, they're they're probably, you know, running neck and neck with Penske, maybe a little bit further behind Penske, but I mean, they they are putting in the work. I mean, week in and week out, this was only a matter of time based on their results, their performances, that they'd get the job done, find their way to victory lane here, because they've been consistently up front both teams all season. Man, Brad Kislowski has done an incredible job. Uh, you know, we've seen their struggles last year. Uh, you know, you could see a little bit of, 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 of hope. They've had some great runs last year. But, you know, I think they had a plan. They put a plan in place. They got great engineering staff. Uh, uh, you know, the, the technology and the resources they have with Ford, with Ford as a partner, uh, you know, they just, man, they kept their heads down. And, man, they just, they went to work. And they probably had a, 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 a competition plan, you know, to how it was all going to work out. And, man, they just been working that plan. And, uh, you know, like you said, Ford ain't been the powerhouse this year as a manufacturer. Uh, but, yes, uh, you know, uh, RFK is really, uh, you know, I don't think they're the number one Ford team, but they're right there close to the to, to Penske's team, I would say. And, and man, they're hitting, hitting their strides at the right at the right time. But, Man, they got some very smart, smart people that work in that organization. And again, you have a manufacturer like Ford behind you. And, and, and there's no big secret that, you know, we talked about this before, that that manufacturer has really been behind this year. But the race Sunday, and I don't know what the statistics are, but at one point there were seven or eight Ford cars in the top 12 or 13 at one point in time, and I don't know the results, how many Fords there were, but you know, it seemed like uh, it was it turned it turned out to be a Ford race. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, but I don't know. I just think Brad Keselowski. I know we heard a lot about uh, Brad in, in the telecast Sunday, but he's really done a tremendous job. I, I believe Jack Roush has really kind of let Brad take take a hold of the reins there at at you know rfk and uh you know brad knows what he needs and knows what he wants in a race car and i think they're finally finally getting the cars where chris and brad need them and uh man it's showing up on the racetrack it's incredible that that the progress that we've seen over the last two years with that organization is impressive yeah it is and uh you look at brad kislowski he's 14th right now on the playoff grid, 151 points above the cutoff. So Brad likely to get in the playoff on points as is, but uh, he's also got three playoff points as well to his name. Now that, that Chris got this win out of the way, I know people are going to point to and say pressure's on the boss to get the win next. He hasn't won yet since he's joined RFK Racing. We mentioned how well they've been running David, it, I, I put my money on that Brad's going to be back in victory lane sooner rather than later, probably before the playoff, and try to secure one of those playoff spots, not leave any room for error to rely on points here. Man, Tyler, you know, as a race car driver and as, you know, the, the organization, the teams, if you can get your cars, if you can get speed in your race cars, and you can be a consistent top 10 team, top 5, 10 week in and week out. 
I can assure you that your wins are going to come. Uh, I, I kind of look at, uh, you know, RFK racing as the right there top 10 team every week, you know, and uh, uh, they've had a lot of lots and lots of speed, uh, especially both cars, Chris and Brad. And Brad's had some bad luck, but uh, but man, if they can just keep doing what they're doing, we wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure to you or myself if we saw Brad get him a victory before the season's over with. But if they'll just keep doing what they're doing, I think Brad's going to make the playoffs. And uh, man, it, you know, it'd be interesting to watch how it all plays out. But man, they've been impressive, and uh, and. It wouldn't surprise me to see Brad and Victory Lane here the next couple of weeks either. Yeah, I think so. Let's take a look at the playoff grid now. Uh, Byron, Truex, Kyle Busch, Denny, Larson, Chastain, Reddick, Blaney, Logano, Bell, Busher, Stenhouse. Those are your 12 winners. They're in the playoff. Harvick and Kislowski are way up on points. They're probably good on points to make it in. Then you go to 15 and 16. Bubba Wallace is 54 above the cutoff. Michael McDowell is in the playoff right now at 18 above. Then you look after that. Ty Gibbs has had a really good run the last few weeks, including a top five this past week. He's now 18 back in 17th. A.J. Allmendinger, I don't know what Kyle Gracing was thinking having him run the Xfinity race out at Road America when he should have been qualifying the cup car and only put them behind this weekend. He's only 22 back from the playoff right now. And we got some road courses coming up for H.A. Daniel Suarez, that team has really fallen off the last couple weeks. They're 34 points back. And then, of course, what everybody's got their eyes on, Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. Um, You know, we, we thought, at least with Chase anyway, that Chase would eventually turn it on and momentum finally it would start clicking. Still hasn't happened yet for Chase Elliott. Um, he's 40 points back. Alex Bowman's 42 points back. And it seems like it's going to be tough for them to point their way in. Probably going to take a win for either guy to do so. Uh, with that said, David, I know Chase and Alex both missed time with their, you know, with, with the injuries they had and everything. But even when both guys have come back, we haven't seen the step up in performance from Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman like, I would have expected. I thought one of them for sure would have turned things around and get the victory lane right now. Clock is ticking for Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman to figure it out here. You know, it's interesting because, you know, you look at that Hendrick organization and you look at William Byron, he has run, he's had a freaking breakout year. You know, he's been so fast almost every race. He's, he's got his car have a lot of speed and, uh, you know, you, you look at Chase Elliott and, uh, and Alex Bowman, and man, you know, just it just doesn't seem like those two cars have a lot of speed. You know, I mean, it's like two different organizations, right? Yeah, now. it's 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 amazing to me. It's interesting because man, Hendrix, I don't care which car, their their cars, all of their cars are fast all the time, year after year. You know, you know that all four cars are championship caliper cars. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to me that even as Chase or or Alex Bowman win a race and make it into the playoffs, man, I don't really see them as threats. You know, they're not ones that I would say uh, uh, that I would be thinking about for to win a championship. You know, what I mean, just because they just hadn't had the speed that we're used to seeing them and that organi- organization have. You know, and like you said, Tyler. You look at William Byron, he's just amazing this year. Lots of speed. We can, he's always in the top five, top ten. He's a championship contender. But it's amazing the same, you know, the same team. And you look at Chase Elliott and and, and uh, Alex Bowman, and you just don't see that same speed, you know. It's just, it's like you said, it looks like two separate organizations. It's not, you know. So it's kind of – it's very interesting, you know. And I uh, – Sunday's race, I saw Chase. He got up to just third place, fourth place. I said, man, he's, you know, and he just kind of faded. You know, he just, his car wasn't strong enough. And, uh, you know, just, we're just not used to seeing that nine car 
not have not perform like we've always seen him perform. You know, it looks like it just looks like that team for some reason or another is a little off. You know what I mean? And I'm not real sure what it is, you know, and why can't you walk over, you know, to the it's interesting, same organization. It's like, what is William Byron's team doing that that the other uh, Hendrick teams aren't doing? You know what I mean? It's just, right. you know, you just don't know. You know, you think you go over in a competition meeting and say, hey, guys, we need some help here. You know what I mean? It's just uh, it's just very – it's intriguing, very interesting. But, uh, but you know, I think, uh, you know, the time – like you said, time time is not on their side. And it'd be interesting to see if Chase and, and uh, Alex Mullen make the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to spotlight a couple guys on the playoff bubble. Let's start with Michael McDowell here. I mentioned he's 18 points above the cutoff right now. Last year was super impressive of them winning the Daytona 500 and making the playoff. But, David, if Michael McDowell in that 34 front row car, if they can point their way in the playoff, with all these teams they're competing against and all these teams have more resources than they do, um, I would be almost more impressed with Michael McDowell making the playoff in points this year than doing what he did last year, the Daytona 500, to make the playoffs. I mean, he is outrunning his equipment big time, and I know his name's up for some of these better rides. Uh, Michael McDowell, for, forget about next year. That team is making a strong case just – for this year, I mean, he he's doing an incredible job with what he has to work with right now. Man, I've always knew Michael was a great race car driver. I mean, you know, he just he's such a great guy, good friend of mine, and uh, it's I love seeing him run so good the last couple seasons, winning the Daytona race, and man, Atlanta Motor Speedway just what was it four weeks ago, four races ago? Man, he was so impressive. I really thought he was going to win the Atlanta race. So strong. And, uh, man, Tyler, I totally agree with you. They're, they, uh, it's impressive, man. I, I want to see him make the playoffs, uh, just because, man, that team, if you, if you gave an award for the most improved team, I, I think it had, it'd probably be front row motorsports. And, and Tyler, like you said, we're hearing a lot of rumblings about Michael McDowell, other teams really wanting Michael McDowell. But man, him, uh, Front Row Motorsports, and Michael McDowell, and all the all the people that make that organization what it is, I'm not so sure. I would, I, I'm not so sure they they've been building a, a quite an empire there amongst themselves. I'm not so sure if I would up and leave if it wasn't a freaking Roger Penske or Hendrick organization. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's been impressive what they've done together, and they've done it together. And, uh, man, you just want to see them stay together, keep that nucleus together, and get better and better, you know? And, well, uh, I and you, know they've, we, you know they've caught Ford's attention, too. When you're out running Stuart Haas and, you know, some of these other Ford teams, I mean, if you're Ford, why would you not want to put more resources in the front row? If they're doing this good with what they have to work with, maybe Ford says we need to invest in you guys and – make sure we can keep this thing going. This is not a fluke. You know, these, the, you know, front row, front row motorsports, the owners, I mean, the funding they're putting into it, the manufacturer they have supporting it, you know, the crew chiefs, the engineering staff, it is impressive, you know, and I would say, you know, that Michael McDowell Ford needs to get more resources to that team and, it, I, you know, they're, they're right there. You know, we're not involved in their organization. So, you know, what is it? They need a little bit here, a little bit there, need a little bit more funding. But, dude, they're right there. You know what I mean? And, you know, you hear rumors. I hear rumors. We all hear rumors that Michael McDowell's a big candidate for these other teams. But, man, his team, Front Row Motorsports and Michael McDowell, are definitely outperforming these other teams I'm hearing that are interested in Michael McDowell, you know. So, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I'd love to see Michael McDowell make, make the playoffs. Uh, what they, that team and what he's done is impressive. And uh, I'm not so sure if one of those bigger teams did reach over and, and try, to, try to grab Michael McDowell. I'm not so sure if I was Michael McDowell that I would want to make that jump. You know what I mean? Keep – 
keep doing what y'all are doing because it's very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's worth noting for sure. Uh, one more thing on the playoff picture. Ty Gibbs, 18 points out. We mentioned how well he ran this past week. I know that he kind of got off to a slow start to this year, but he's coming into his own, and there was a lot of pressure on Ty Gibbs, not only just with his last name, but replacing a legend in Kyle Busch, being the reigning Xfinity champ. Uh, Ty Gibbs starting to put it together here, David. He's definitely coming into his own, man. He's an impressive little driver, that's for sure. I've been impressed with him. Uh, you know, he's 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 knocking on the door. He's right there, you know. And, uh, man, you know, it's amazing, uh, you know, that he – it's possibility that he can make the playoffs, you know. And, uh, man, you know, his family, his grandfather and his dad, you know, such a sad story about Corey. Uh, man, they're just such – Corey was one of my great friends, and, and Joe Gibbs is such a, a good friend and a great man. Uh, I don't know Ty Gibbs. I don't know him that well. But, man, just for everything the kid has been through and the family's been through, uh, he's deserving. You know what I mean? He has driven his tail off. And like you said, Tyler, He's got big shoes to fill, you know what I mean? Stepping, you know, to step into a car that Kyle Busch, you know, we know what Kyle Busch has done. And and stepping into that organization, driving for your grandfather, I mean, he is, uh, it's been impressive, you know what I mean? I, I, I really, I, I, uh, I, I uh, it's just been impressive, you know. I, I'd love to see uh, Ty Gibbs make the playoff. I think it would be awesome. And I know, uh, you know, Toyota's excited about Ty Gibbs. I mean, I, I mean, anything's possible. The next, what is it, three more races left? Yeah, four. I mean, that's that's what makes it so exciting, man. You want to see Michael McDowell in there? I mean, there's a there's a lot at stake, you know, and uh, you know, and, and 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 again, you know, three races from now, if we see Ty Gibbs in the playoffs. It would not surprise us, you know, what I mean, because he is just. That team, he's done a phenomenal job, and uh, it just be cool. It's a great story for our sport. But Ty Gibbs, he's he's he is a superstar in the making right in front of us. You know, he is going to be a, a champion in our sport of NASCAR Cup racing. He's going to win a lot of races. I've just been so impressed with this kid. Yeah. I, 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 how old is he, Tyler? What is he, 20, 19? I mean, how old I, is he? 19, I believe, is how old Ty um, Gibbs. Um, amazing, you know, to to win an ARCA championship, go into an Xfinity, win an Xfinity championship, and uh, first year in Cup. I mean, it's just man, I all I all I see is just talent, talent, talent. He does have a championship caliber uh, championship caliber organization behind him, but man, you still got to drive that race car, and he's done a phenomenal job and. And and I, I hope they end up in the playoffs. I think it's a good story. Yeah. Uh, 20 years old. His birthday is October 4th. He'll be able to have a beer. Uh, <laughs> but between now and then, we'll see him continue to run up front and uh, compete, try to make a playoff spot. Uh, let's look ahead to this weekend's race at uh, Michigan, the Fire Keepers Casino 400. David, you've been out to Michigan many times, and – for folks that don't know, I haven't been to Michigan, but David, you you've seen what goes on there in Michigan, and it's kind of the Midwest version of Talladega, basically. Uh, no doubt about it, man. I, I love. I, I I thought I was going to race in Michigan. Uh, I ended up not racing there. But man, what a it's! I love Michigan, man, and the people, the fans are incredible. And like you said, Tyler, it is freaking. It, you know, it's Talladega, but in Michigan, you know what I mean? These fans, you look at that infield, if you're watching the Xfinity race or the cup race, that place is packed. And those those fans, they're passionate. And, man, it's just like the fans at Talladega. They know how to party, dude. It's amazing. You know, that's one of the one of the places, you know, I'm so focused on the race. And uh, when I'm done racing, whether it be in the in the in the camp in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series or the Xfinity Series over 25 years, I always made it. Uh, uh, always stayed over for the Cup race just because, man, the things you see on the infield is amazing, man. The and these people are passionate, man. They're passionate about their NASCAR, 
and they're freaking passionate about their partying, dude. It's amazing, Tyler. And if you hadn't been to Michigan, I would put that on your bucket list because it, it won't disappoint you. The racing's phenomenal. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm sad that I won't be there racing uh, this weekend, but I'll, I'll definitely be there next year, that's for sure. So last year, uh, David comes back and he tells me, Tyler, you should have been to Michigan. I'm like, why is that? He's like, man, there was all these single good looking women that were just everywhere. Like you, you could have brought one home with you, Tyler. You know, you missed out. You, you missed the window. I'm like, man, if I would have known, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, mean it, it's, I got a lot of friends out, you know, a lot of friends, fans that are become friends as long as I've been racing out there. And, uh, I love going by and seeing all the fans and talking to people. And, you know, I, I, I got a beautiful family and I'm not a single man anymore, but for a young man like yourself, that's single is probably not a bad place to go hang out at. You know what I mean? And, uh, uh, but man, it, it's just a lot of fun. A lot of great people, a lot of great NASCAR fans. I don't know. They just do it right there at Michigan international speedway and uh, racing man racing there. I love that track. And uh, the track is a sister track to one of my all-time favorite racetracks that's not here anymore, Texas World Speedway and Bryan College Station, two-mile super speedway that I grew up grew up going to. Um, uh, man, it just – it brings – when I'm there racing, it just reminds me of Texas World Speedway. I love it, you know. Oh, yeah. Special place indeed. Uh, yeah. When you come to Michigan, David – you can't not talk about your favorite guy, Kevin Harvick. He's still looking for his first win of 2023. He got back to victory lane last year here after going on a drought of sorts and ending it at Michigan. Um, I imagine he's going to be one of the favorites, uh, but also the guy that had a chance to win last week, won the week prior to that at Pocono, Denny Hamlin probably is going to be the odds-on favorite uh, going into this weekend. What do you think of uh, the guys that will be running up front? What's kind of your thoughts? Well, I, you know, Kevin Harvick, that team has had a lot of speed. Man, every week, you know, they, they're fast. The cars are fast. Kevin does a hell of a job. And it's just, for some reason, it's been a little bit of a challenge for them to get to the start-finish line first. But, man, you know Kevin's organization's capable and man they're kind of the the flagship car in that Stuart Haas racing right now but man that you know week in and week out Kevin's up there in the top 10 uh, uh, another guy that I would I would definitely pay attention to uh besides Kevin Harvick would be Brad Kozlowski over the years Brad has always ran great there you know and uh you know he you I don't have all the uh you know, we don't have our statistician on, on with us here tonight. Uh, Dominic, he could tell you how many times that Brad's won there at Michigan. But Brad has won, I'd say, at least twice there on the cup side. Um, uh, but, you know, you look at Denny Hamlin, that man, that that, that team, that uh, Joe Gibbs racing team, they're, they're on fire. They got a lot of momentum. Uh, you know, you can't – you know, we always talk about momentum, Tyler. And, right. and how about Chris Boucher, you know, and look yeah. at Brad. I mean, it's it's going to – I can just tell you this. Uh, you look at William Byron. Been a lot of people with speed. You know, we talked about Chase Elliott earlier. Needs a win. Uh, man, it's it's going to be an exciting, exciting race. You know, two-mile – you know, two-mile speedway. I, I say a, a super speedway, you know. It's going to be a great race, and there's so many people uh, that are capable of winning that race. It's going to be interesting to watch, that's for sure. So my commitment to the bit, I'll go with Chase Elliott. I said I was picking him until he wins the ra wins the race. But <laughs> if I'm being serious, who I actually think is going to win, Denny Hamlin's running as good as anybody right now. And he had a very good chance to win last week. We mentioned winning the week prior. Joe Gibbs has been running really good all year long. Uh, I like Denny Hamlin to get the job done. David, who you got? Well, you know, I, you know, there's so many, you know, and – Harvick has just had a, his cars have been so fast, you know. And um, man, I, I'm going to go with Kevin Harvick be, uh, just because I want to see him win a race before he retires. And they've been so close week in and week out. And I think he can get it done there at Michigan, you know. But, but 
you know, I'm going to go with Harvick, but I can assure you that, man, Brack, his louse is going to be strong. Uh, Chase Hill is going to be – there's going to be – man, it's going to be a great race. You know, we'll uh, – next week when we get on our podcast, Tyler, we're going to figure out who was right or who was wrong with our picks, you know what I mean, because it is hard to – so uh, I think you probably got the right one. Denny Hammond's probably the favorite just because how fast they've been week in and week out. Uh, but, man, there's so many other teams and drivers that are, that are capable of winning. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, that's for sure. Yeah. News and notes time uh, Our headlines from around the sport. Usually Dominic does this part, so I got to do news and notes this week, and we'll, uh, we'll manage. We'll make do without Dominic. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get right after it with our headlines, starting with Legacy Motor Club, uh, the team owned by Jimmy Johnson, as well as Maury Gallagher and Richard Petty. We already knew they were switching from Chevrolet to Toyota to be the third Toyota team, uh, joining Joe Gibbs Racing and 2311 Racing next year. And one of the things that was brought up when they were making this move was how familiar their drivers were as previous Toyota drivers, both Noah Gragson and Eric Jones. But the Athletics' Jordan Bianchi is reporting, David, that Noah Gragson, who's had a very disappointing rookie campaign, if we're just going to be honest with you, everybody, uh, is likely out of that ride after one season, and John Hunter Nemechek will get the call up from the Gibbs Xfinity program to hop in and be the teammate of Eric Jones. David, what's your reaction of uh, John Hunter Nemechek taking that ride next year? Well, Noah Gregson has done a hell of a job. You know, he's he's capable uh, of winning. Uh, we've seen what he did in the Xfinity Series. It was impressive, impressive, impressive. You know, he, he earned the right to go up to Cup and to drive for an organization like Legacy. Um, you know, uh, you know, I – I don't know if, if you can place all the blame on Noah Grayson being his, his, his freshman year as a cup driver. I'm not so sure if, if the cars are, or, you know, that organization is giving him the type of car he needs to, to, to perform better. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think Eric Jones has run that, you know, we, we've seen a little He's bit. Of, too, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, but, you know, un, uh, we learned weeks ago or months ago that, that, uh, you know, the team was switching over to Toyota. That team is going to come a, a, a Toyota team. Uh, and and to see, to hear what you're telling me about John Hunter Nemechek, I'm not surprised because John Hunter Nemechek is very capable, a great race car driver, a young, young talent coming up that's won a lot of races already. And uh, he is in that Toyota family. He's been there for a long time. They're familiar with him. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of variables that happen, you know, uh, when when you have a driver switch like this. You know what I mean? I'm not surprised to hear this. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's not surprising, you know, but uh, but I don't I don't you know, I think Noah Gregson is going to end up on his feet somewhere probably even better. But uh, but, you know, the Toyota. The Toyota team, the Toyota family, they kind of, you know, they kind of work within their organization. And I think right. John this Hunter seems to be it. very Toyota driven. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So not surprised to hear that. Be interesting to see if it, if it plays out that way. Well, and, and you know, uh, what do they say? It's not what you know, it's who you know. I, I think, in all honesty, like Noah Gregson and John Hunter Nemechek are probably pretty similar talents. Next year, you would probably get pretty similar results. First year with Toyota team with either driver. But if that's who Toyota prefers, then it makes sense, I guess, uh, as far as that goes. Uh, speaking of driver changes, uh, since we uh, last talked to you, uh, we you know got the news that, uh, you know, what was going on with uh, Justin Haley, that he was leaving colleague for Rick Ware Racing. And we talked about that last week's show. But now the developments of what is next for the 31 car at Colleg, uh, the folks at Door Bumper Clear were saying this week uh, from a Dirty Mo Media that Austin Hill was the favorite to get that ride. But now Noah Gragson's name has come up here. Uh, Colleg, what, what do you think, David, uh, of those two guys, 
or any others who could be a potential good fit for that 31 car to replace Justin Haley. Yeah, you know, there's there's a um, man, there's a lot of young, great talent out there to deserve an opportunity, deserves a opportunity, you know. Um man, you know, the, those, you know, Noah Gregson, obviously, you know, that's that's a perfect fit. Uh Chevrolet, you know, he he's a Chevrolet guy, you know what I mean? Uh Noah Gregson, he's in the Chevrolet family. And uh, you know, I, in my mind, I would think that he's probably the candidate for that car, you know, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of variables, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, Chevrolet GM has a lot to say in, in how that works out. You know, you got to look at the business side of it, you know, which driver who, who has, you know, the sponsor, what, what driver fits the sponsors they have already. If the driver bring in funding with them, there's a lot of variables, you know what I mean? But you can't go wrong with any of those drivers you mentioned. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. You know, the interesting part of, of, about all this, Justin Haley has done a phenomenal job, just a great a great young talent in our sport. And it's interesting that early on, uh, you know, I think it's early for him to have signed with Rick Rare Racing for the 2024 season, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, what happened there? You know what I mean? It's like, man, I just thought that that was a, that was a good driver team, that organization, that was a good, a good nucleus there, you know? But, you know, you just don't know. You don't know if sometimes a driver's personality doesn't fit the owner's personality, Sometimes the business side gets in the way. Maybe, uh, you know, Justin Haley's funding, some of it's going away. Maybe they don't have a sponsor to replace. I mean, there's so many different variables, but it's interesting that Justin Haley would sign with Rick Ware Racing this early on and not wait for other opportunities to open up. You know what I mean? So it's it's very interesting the dynamics of what's been playing out in front of us because a lot of stuff we don't really know about why why you know, there's a lot of why a lot of questions that we don't have answers for but i i really thought it was very interesting to hear that news when it then when it did break you know what i mean I, I was really really shocked and surprised by it myself i don't know about you tyler but i was i was too uh he did get a multi-year da- deal out of it and there's going to be more involvement with RFK Racing. They're going to be like the third RFK Racing team. And based on this past weekend, that doesn't seem like such a bad thing to be affiliated with RFK Racing. So maybe it's a good move for Justin Haley. We'll see. A couple more notes. Uh, did you forget him already, folks? Shane Van Gisbergen, uh, NASCAR Cup Series winner at Chicago several weeks ago. Uh, we told you how his V8 Supercar team – gave him permission to exit his contract early if he wanted to pursue NASCAR racing. And it looks like he is going to take advantage of that. Not only are we going to see him in Indy back in the Project 91 car here in a couple of weeks at the road course, but he said in an interview that he is weighing his options uh, to try to make a move to NASCAR next year. And it sounds like that that move would be a full-time Xfinity ride. And then, uh, you know, some cup races probably sprinkled in that Project 91 car, whatever it may be. Um, we know Trackhouse and Colleague have a relationship, so maybe that could work. Maybe it's Junior Motorsports, whatever it may be. I think Shane Van Gisbergen would be in very good quality equipment in an Xfinity car, David. And to me, I, I know that the ego might say, hey, I won in the Cup Series. I want to go ride in a Cup car. But – Shane Van Gisberg in here, I, I'm I'm happy to hear that he's not listening to the ego, that he wants to do this right and learn how to race ovals and all that. Ex- time in the Xfinity series and running part-time cup, that, that to me is the smart call here to put yourself in the best position long-term to succeed in the cup series. No doubt about it. I think, uh, I think what Shane's doing and what you, how you explain, I think is brilliant, you know, to, to, come down to the NASCAR Xfinity Series, learn the ovals, get experience racing on the ovals. We know he can 
win on the cup side on the, on the road courses. We know that. And we'll have an opportunity some more this year and next year with, uh, with track house racing to jump in that 91 car and to go win some more, to try to go win some more road course races, but man, to, to race full time in the Xfinity series and a powerhouse team, and then to jump up and run some road course races in a cup car, man, it don't get much better than that. You know what I mean? So, uh, for me, uh, my opinion is, I think, man, I think that's a smart move. And, and uh, yeah, like you said, Tyler, uh, you know, from a, from a, uh, I don't know, uh, a, uh, an ego, an ego type of deal, you know, obviously. Yeah. I mean, but man, it's this Shane's a great race car driver. He knows how it works and he knows that he didn't have a lot of experience on ovals. And what a great way to go be very competitive on ovals and get some experience and get with the powerhouse team in the Xfinity side and go win some road course races, get an opportunity to run cup on the road course races, but to try to win some ovals and learn the ovals, I think it's, I think it's a perfect situation for him, you know, one year in the Xfinity series and then, you know, then move up to the cup series. I mean, they probably got it all planned out and you got to understand what, what you're talking about and you hit on it, Tyler. Uh, track house, you know, uh, Justin Marks and the track house organization, they're probably working with him, you know, they're going to place him where they need to place him. And man, that's a, when you got track house behind you, you're in pretty good shape, man. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we mentioned that partnership with colleague colleagues, pit crews come from track house who have been mm -hmm. the best pit crews in NASCAR this year. So yeah, he'll be set up to succeed wherever he ends up, but have to imagine that Trackhouse will be involved in some way, shape, or form. Final note, uh, a couple of money items of sorts, if you want to call it that. Uh, point A, NASCAR is considering a driver incentive program where they're looking to straight up pay drivers for media appearances and for – being a spokesman for different companies, whatever it may be, some extra cash to throw around. Call David. He'd gladly do that. He'll take your money and, and be your spokesman for whatever you're looking for, NASCAR. David would be glad to. The other note, um, we've been talking a lot about the TV deal situation, and we the first piece of the pie has been cut, as we found out within the last couple of days, that beginning in 2025, the CW Network – which is on broadcast television, not just cable, but broadcast television, is going to air all 33 of the Xfinity Series races. Every race, practice and qualifying as well, on broadcast TV. Huge exposure for the Xfinity Series. Comparably speaking, only five races right now uh, are on broadcast television. Um, and on top of that, the money. The X NASCAR wanted to find more money to separate besides just what they were getting in the cup series, the Xfinity contract over seven years, just for Xfinity is going to bring in a $800 million to the wow. Xfinity series. By comparison, David, the TV contract that F1 has with ESPN pays them $75 million. So the Xfinity series, NASCAR's second tier series, is going to make 1.3 times as much as F1 is going to make in the United States off TV. So, David, I know there's a lot to unpack there, but where do you want to start on, on those two items? Man, you know, that's – wow, that's amazing. You know, it's it's, it's just great uh, that a network uh, – you know, that network is going to join forces with the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I just think it's a – a match made in heaven for all the team owners in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for the drivers. We know the future is bright for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and that network, you know. And uh, but man, the hearing the financial side of it, man, it's it's. I, I'm just I'm happy. I I hope a lot of that money gets funneled into the into the teams uh, where the teams can operate, make profit, and uh, uh, you know, and then and then for. For, for that network to cover practice and qualifying. I mean, it's going to be huge exposure for the teams, the drivers, and for the whole series. I think it's great, you know. And, again, 
so Tyler, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know much about, you know, the TV packages and all that. That's your, yours and Dominic's, but, you know, y'all know a lot, but that's, that's y'all's where you work in that media, but man, from everything I'm hearing from you, man, it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Right. NASCAR still is going to do the production. So it's not going to be, you know, something out of the ordinary. It's going to be NASCAR people that know what they're doing. So that's a positive. Right. Um, but you talk about the financial side of it, 800 million over seven years is a lot of cash that'll go a, a huge for the Xfinity series. Um, and, and to have that network exposure, David, you and I, we, we were, we were chatted up at a, at a hotel bar about a, a month and a half ago. And it sounded like back then that the Xfinity series was looking at going to an all streaming deal it was going to be on like a prime video or an Apple TV. And I mean, if basically, if you want to watch Xfinity and if it's on a streaming service, you'd have to really go out of your way to go find it. Now, you don't even have to have cable to watch these Xfinity races on the CW. You can put on your bunny ears antenna and you're going to pull up the Xfinity race. This is, David, a great way to attract a new audience for people that maybe want to watch NASCAR normally, that it's going to be right there literally in front of them uh, with this exposure. Man, that's that's incredible, man. That's uh, man, you you're making me excited, dude. That's awesome, you know. And you know, for a lot of the new team owners coming into the NASCAR Xfinity Series to own a team, it, you know, it'd be that's going to be good for the team owners, you know, and 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 to put new eyeballs, you know, uh, you know, over the years we we need new fans, you know, this any kind of sport needs new fans, you know, and. Uh, I, I think it's brilliant. You know, I, I'm so excited to hear and learn all about this. is is exciting. We know that that series, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, uh, the future is bright. Uh, you know, there for a while, like you said, we were talking at the hotel, talking about streaming, streaming all the races. I was concerned. You know what I mean? It's like, man, we're going to lose a big, we're going to lose a lot of a lot of viewers. You know. Uh, uh, but anyway, man, that's exciting news, and uh, man, I can't wait to hear what the what the contract's going to be for the cup side, you know, who it's going to be with and how that's all going to play out. Yeah. Sounds like that NBC and Fox are likely to stay involved. And then the streaming service takes about five or six races sometime in the summer. Uh, but expect a big increase for NASCAR to get that money they were looking for, which would be big for everybody involved. Uh, as far as that goes. Uh, now, David, as far as that driver incentive program, um, I think one complaint has been about not getting these NASCAR drivers out enough. We remember the days of Dale Jr. and Jeff Gordon, you know, being on like Regis and Kelly and, you know, all the late night appearances and everything like that. Um, just a little extra cash for these guys to do these things. I, I, I think this is brilliant on NASCAR's part to get their guys more out there. Well, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I agree with you on that. I want to say, but. You know, if, if man, if you're God gave you the 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 God gave you the gift of, of being a talented race car driver, you made it to the you made it as a professional to the top. You know what I mean? I you know I you know a lot of I, I think about Brendan Gone and just a lot of people that I raced with over the years that really went out of their way to promote the sport, promote the series. Uh, to tell the fans that, you know, tell new fans how awesome our sport is, you know, you never really had to incentivize, incentivize the drivers, incentivize the, the drivers, you know, I just, you know, it's part of what we do, you know, and you look at Jeff Gordon uh, and Jimmy Johnson and, you know, others and the CM on the, re, you know, what was it? Uh, you know, you see him on, you know, uh, late night talk shows, early morning talk shows. I mean, Jeff Gordon was phenomenal, really showcased our sport, you know, in all kinds of ways, was phenomenal at it. You know, uh, you know, to me, as as part of being a NASCAR race car driver and being blessed that you made it as a professional, you should want to, re, you know, you should want to go out 
and be like Jeff Gordon. Anytime there's a radio station that reaches out to your team or your PR person, uh, you know, I hear, and, and you know a little bit more about this, Tyler, than I do, but I hear over the last two or three years that, you know, the drivers today, they don't, they're not interested in going out and, and, and doing media work, you know, being like Jeff Gordon, getting on radio stations, getting on, you know, Good Morning America and, uh, you know, Regis and Kelly and all these big talk shows, you know, they're just, I don't know. But I personally, I think every driver, and, and you look at the a sport of NASCAR racing, you take the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and Craftsman Truck Series, and you look at the Xfinity Series and you look at the Cup Series, I mean, what is there, 120 drivers, 125 drivers in the world that race in NASCAR? I, you know, I, I, didn't, I believe, I think it's brilliant for NASCAR to pay the drivers to do more of that stuff. That's awesome. Uh, but I think as, as, a, as a driver in our great sport that they should want to be doing it. And, and NASCAR, it's sad that NASCAR has got to go out and pay us to do it. Yeah, I want to be paid. Give us some money. Yeah. But. You know, you shouldn't have to go out and and pay the drivers to go do that. You know right. what I mean? But but it's a different time, you know. And, and uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool that NASCAR is going to do that. And uh, you know, maybe we'll see a lot more of our superstars and and of our sport on Good Morning America. You know, on Fox News. You know, so yeah, I think it's wonderful. However, you got to make that happen. You know, for NASCAR to step up, I think it's awesome. Yeah, we're always comparing to F1 all the time. And what has F1 done best? Market their drivers. They're not afraid to do anything. I mean, these guys are funny, and they're dancing, hooping, hollering on social media. <laughs> like, they get out of their comfort zone. We see these NASCAR drivers are kind of in a box and afraid to just be themselves, you know. And and I think NASCAR needs to try to get that out of these guys, and we'll see if that happens. Yeah, Up I think, Tyler, what's your – what you're saying there is a, the kids are now racing. They're freaking awesome race car drivers. But, you know, some of the cool personalities and that of, of, of drivers past, we don't have as much as that as, as we once did. You know what I mean? And uh, be kind of cool to, to see everybody's real personalities, see them be quirky, see them be, just be their selves, you know. And let's get some more personalities out there, you know. I think it helps sell the sport. Yeah, I think so. Uh, David, we'll get to our Ask David segment where you guys submit questions to us each and every week uh, by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com, Twitter and Facebook at Star Podcast. You can find us there and uh, submit your questions to David, myself, Dominic, our guests, whoever, and uh, we'll answer them for you. So, David, uh, our first question comes from Lewis, and Lewis wants to know, David, what song – pumps you up for a big race <laughs> man you know uh yeah there's so many of them you know it's it's hard to you know it's hard to pin uh it's hard just to pick one um you know i golly it's hard to pick one but you know it's kind of when I was a kid growing up, my dad worked for Vita Fresh Orange Juice and with Ronnie Chumley and Tony Bittenhausen Jr. As a little boy going to the racetrack with my dad, you know, he listened to uh, Conway Twitty, you know, and a legend, you know, uh, old, old timer country singer. Conway's awesome, you know. He listened to some, some, some Spanish music, you know, and, and, Man, I hear those old Conway songs, man. It just, golly, you know, it just, it lights me up, man. I want to go win. But, man, there's some rock and roll songs. There's just, there's so many songs that I listen to that, man, just make me want to get out there and just, you know, go balls to the wall, you know. And uh, there's so many, it's just hard to pinpoint one, you know. You know, I I, I love country music. I know you do too, David. And, I obviously don't race in a race car, but every day I find myself having to listen to some Luke Combs and some Morgan Wallen as of late <laughs> and, and their new stuff, fast car, the old Tracy Chapman song oh, that, that uh, uh, Luke Combs is doing now. Yeah. Love that song. I mean, last night that Morgan Wallen has, I mean, 
it just gets you feeling good. Like good relaxes you a bit, you know. I mean, that yeah, that fast car that that's a good racing song too. Dude, it is. It's a great racing song. You know, there's just so many. Golly, you know, that's a great question. <laughs> that is a great question. But, but man, you know, man, in the mornings when I'm driving to the hotel to the track to race, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm flipping through the stations, and man, you just hear a great song. It's like, man, it just, you know, music, music just brings a lot of joy to all of us, you know. And but there's just I don't know. There's 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 not a bunch of them, but there's some good songs that just you just want to get in a race car and just buzz the wall. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I wish I could. I wish I could name one of them, but there's there's a lot of them. <laughs> got, a, got a couple more here for you. Heather wants to know, David, what age did you first wheel any automobile by yourself? Man, that's a great question. But, uh, you know, um, so my Uncle Mike, Mike Starr, who built the Team Texas High Performance Driving School, and, you know, my, my dad my, my dad and my Uncle Mike, they did a lot for me early on, you know. But, man, I used to sit on my uncle's lap. Uh, we lived in North Houston, and, and my uncle, he lived with my grandparents, uh, you know, in, in southwest Houston. Probably took about 40 minutes to drive from – our house to my grandparents' house where Mike lived, but I, Mike would come get me and I'd, I'd sit on his lap and drive. He never touched the steering wheel. And I, I was seven, eight years old driving on his lap, man, down the highways. Uh, so, you know, he taught me how to drive at a young, young age. It's amazing. You know, and I can imagine nowadays my boys do it. You know, I, I'm, you know, I steal what Mike did for me. I try to do for my boys. Uh, but, man, I, I was, I would say, eight, nine years old when I, I could drive a car by myself. You know, it was amazing. I think the first time I drove by myself, David, I, I was around the same age, about eight or nine years old. My dad, uh, my family, we were moving and had one of those big U-Hauls. And the first thing I drove, my dad let me drive the U-Haul. And I mean, what a thing for an eight or nine year old to drive yeah. the very first time, you know, but we're it's on a, the open road. It's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. And, and, you know, uh, we all, you know, we all want to get our license and drive, you know, and, and man, I, I was, you know, you look back on it, it's like, man, how did we get away with that? You know, but I was driving way years before I ever had a driver's license, you know what I mean? And I couldn't wait to get my driver's license. Uh, you know, it's like my son, DJ, DJ's 14 now. And, you know, he, he's one of them, you know, he drives the race cars at Texas Motor Speedway and, and he's been driving since he was two, three years old, like, like I did, you know, and, you know, early on when he was two, three years old, I would, I, you know, I work, I work out a lot and I used to run and I, and Santa Claus brought him a, a go-kart and, uh, you know, his go-kart, he could stare at that thing, but he couldn't reach the gas pedal on the brakes. Well, I just had it idled up where he could just follow me, you know what I mean? And, and I would drive right beside me, follow me as I'm running, and I just stop. I could grab it with my hand and stop it, you know? So, you know, he's been driving, and, then, you know, and like you have stories with your dad, I have stories with my dad and my uncle. You know, we just, we learn how to drive just because they helped us, you know? And, uh but man, I was uh, kind of like you, Tyler. I was eight or nine years old when I when I could drive a car by myself on my own, you know. Uh, but you know, obviously not, you know, not driving on the highways or the street, you know. But I could drive, you know, down the street or around the cul-de-sac where we live. I could drive a car. I knew I knew how to hit the brake, how to put it in gear, how to step on the gas. I mean, you know, we just you just learned it. <laughs> yeah. And then you just haul ass from there, you know? Yeah. Dude, I, man, I, I, man, you know, people don't know, man, I want to be a race car driver, you know, from as long as, you know, you know, as, as early as I can remember three or four years old, you know, and, and man, our, those big wheels, I used to race those big wheels around the salt cul-de-sac where we lived and I had pile lines and I was like, I was racing on a circle track, you know, and then the, then the go-karts came and, and, uh, you know, it just golly, it was just race, race, race. You know what I mean? What years, early years, you know, and uh, that's why you know we we talk, we have a lot of guests. 
a lot of the guests that join us, race car drivers, we like we like for them to take us back to the beginning. You know what I mean? Because everybody's got a great story, and I love hearing the passion and and you know how did racing and who instilled auto racing into you? You know what I mean? And uh, for me, it was early, early on in my life. You know, my dad was involved in it when I was born. And man, it was just every, you know, I lived, eat and slept auto racing. You know what I mean? That's all I thought about. It's all I read about, dreamed about, you know, and you like, we, we like to hear other drivers stories, you know what I mean? It, because it's intriguing. It's, it's interesting. It's fun to, to learn about them, you know, but you know, that's the great question. You know, it's cool that Tyler, you started about the same time I did, eight, eight, nine years old driving. You could drive on your own. You know, what yeah. I mean? it's kind of cool, but uh, uh, pretty neat deal. Last question. This from one comes from Kennedy. Kennedy wants to know, David, have you ever sneezed during green flag conditions? If so, how did that turn out? Ever sneeze? <laughs> uh, golly, you know, it's uh. Man, I can't really ever remember when I was out there racing. You know, now I might have sneezed under caution or before race started, but I can't ever remember sneezing during competition. You know, and uh, that's a great question, but I don't know if it's just because you're so focused and, and 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 like you said earlier, your adrenaline is so high. Uh, uh, but I can't ever remember sneezing during while I was racing, you know. Uh, you know, I can remember sneezing after a race was over with or before race started or, or getting in the car and getting ready, but never during competition, you know. And, uh, you know, and, and that's a cool question because it goes back to, you know, uh, a, a question that a lot of people ask a lot of race car drivers, hey, you know, how can you race for four hours and not have to use the restroom, you know? And, uh, you know, we talked about the heat earlier. I just think you're adrenaline. You're so hot, you know, and if you got to pee, you know, you pretty much sweat that out of your body. You know right. what I mean? And, uh, you know, if you got to do number two, you're just screwed. But, you know, that's as a 25 year veteran or racing my whole career, I've never, I have never used a restroom on myself during a race. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of interesting. Uh, and that's a question that pops up a lot for a lot of drivers, you know, but man, what a, what a great question. And, uh, and I can't ever remember sneezing during a race, you know I mean? It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of wild. You know, you see, uh, you see other sports, you know, you see marathon runners and, and different sports, you know, I can't even remember really ever seeing anybody sneeze during competition of anything, really, you know, my, I, myself, I haven't. Right. Yeah. I'd, but what a great, interesting question, Tyler. Wow. Yeah. Sneezing. I, I'd never have thought about that, to be honest. No, we've all, no, it's, uh, we've all yeah. thought the bathroom thing, but yeah, sneezing. No. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing, like when I'm on air, uh, like I don't want, to sneeze while I'm trying to do a broadcast myself. That's something <laughs> I have to deal with. You know, I've I've had times where I was recording something and we had to hit stop because I had to sneeze and then we <laughs> hop back on or whatever, you know. So Man, you know my drink, my drink here, I like drinking my, you know, like I, my energy drink and water. Um, you know, but you know, even during our podcast, I think during our podcast, there's been several other times that I've had to sneeze, you know what I mean? And so I just kind of moved to the left where I don't know what he said, kind of get out of the picture and sneeze and come back in, you know, but uh, but can't ever remember sneezing during competition, you know? And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And that's a good question for other guests of ours, other drivers, yeah. because, you know, sometimes if you sneeze and your visor's down, the hell of the mess you can make at times. You know what I mean? How bad your right. sneeze is. Oh, uh, yeah. But... You're going to bring out a caution, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Spotter yeah, can't yeah. help you there. Yeah. No, no, no doubt about it, man. <laughs> David, uh, we mentioned uh, Dominic out on vacation this week. He'll be back next week. But uh, what's going on with, with you, David, uh, throughout the uh, next couple of days here? Man, you know, it's uh, – uh, just working uh, on, on my racing school, working at Team Texas, working on some cars. Uh, I got a big sponsor meeting tomorrow. Actually, I got a couple sponsor meetings uh, this week. 
Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, uh, got to go to Houston this coming weekend. My mom's having a little procedure done. She's got to go in the hospital for uh, a couple of days. So I'm going to go down there and be with my mom uh, uh, for a couple of days. And then uh, and then uh, got an event at the Speedway next week. But just uh, just busy, just, you know, uh, just busy with uh, meetings, racing school stuff, NASCAR racing stuff, and uh, 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 trying to be a good son and take care of my mom, you know. So, yeah. Awesome. That's good. I'm uh I'm actually gonna go see my mom and dad too, go spend weekend at home and uh see my sister before she goes back off to college for the year. So uh everybody enjoying their little summer break, enjoying some summer of Jones, uh one way <laughs> or the other. I mean that's Dominic's about to go back to the classroom himself. So I'm glad he got some time mm -hmm. off and uh David, well, school school's about to start for everybody, you know. Yeah, I'm sure your boys will be back here soon too, which I, in your case, you might be glad to be sending them off back to school, you know. <laughs> well, there's already football practice, you know, my, you know, there's football practice and, uh, you know, my, and then my youngest boy races and my oldest boys, he's, man, he wants to start racing. There's just a, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, and, and, it's, and it's a blessing, you know, it's just living life and, uh, you know, as long as everybody's healthy and everybody's happy, that's all that matters, you know, it's oh, what, yeah. what it's all about, you know. So. One more one more note before we go. Uh, several weeks back, we had Joseph Wooten from the Steve Miller Band on the show. Uh, yeah. And his cousin, of course, is on the board for NASCAR. And uh, he invited me. I went out this past Sunday night to see him and the Steve Miller band perform uh, at Fair Park in, in Dallas. And it was awesome. Great show. Uh, great to meet Joseph and, you know, shoot it with him and meet his lovely wife and very friendly, nice people. And the Steve Miller band, David, get this. Everybody knows the song, The Joker, right? Yeah. This year is the 50th anniversary of when that song was released. And wow. Like listening to all their hits and everything, David, they still sound as good as they ever have before. Still just timeless music from the Steve Miller Time, band. So, timeless music, man. That's Steve Miller band's been around forever, man. And then you hear one of their songs and you still rock out on it, man. You know, I'm I'm uh I'm glad you went to that concert. I'd love to have known about it. I would have went. That'd have been kind of cool. But man, that's that's awesome, dude. It's it's cool that you uh you got to go and 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 man. The Steve Miller band, it's it's kind of like Elvis, man. The music's timeless, that's for sure. Yeah. So thanks, Joseph, for having me and uh, a great time on that front. We got to go. Uh, as always, subscribe to show new episodes out each and every week on uh, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, check us out on social media, uh, Twitter, and uh, Facebook at Star Podcasts by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com. This show, part of the Studio Soapbox Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Jones Report, uh, Coach Bo Knows Show, and more uh, on all podcast platforms. And we will sign off. We'll put the check flag out on this episode. For David Starr, I'm Tyler Jones. Dominic will be back with us next week. Have a great one. We'll see you next time here on Let's Go Racing. So long, everybody.